world one, Orbis Florum. Within the universes and worlds that can be traversed and visited, we visit one world whose existence hangs on the shoulders of a tender flower. A literal tender flower. A blue poppy flower in a basement at the edge of that world. This world could be described as one that had more flowers than people or animals combined. Roses, tulips, lotuses, and other flowers that are not of our world. I write about this world because I have ended its existence and have taken my first steps into becoming a harbinger. It was called Orbis Florum, or the World of Flowers. I reached this world after the leather-bound book fluttered open and sucked me into its pages. Upon reaching the world, I was greeted with the visage of a flower garden. It was a huge expanse, bordered by moss stone walls and high iron spikes and skewers. I felt in awe of the sheer volume of flora that lay before me. Roses, orchids, chrysanthemums, poppies, snapdragons, carnations, and a few flowers that I had never seen before. One of them was a flower that had a neon blue glow. Another had huge petals that were at least as big as my arm. I walked on towards the iron-wrought gates in front of me. They were at least thirty feet tall and had golden trims on their spikes and the gate had a huge latch on the inside. I pushed open the gate, walking forward into the forest and was greeted with a dank odour. I decided to turn and walk away from it. I later found out that the smell was that of a plant that burns anyone into ash if they walk close enough. I walked further and further into the maze that was the jungle and stumbled upon a huge mansion of some kind. It was an enormous gothic structure with gargoyles and mysterious creatures etched and carved into its huge grey bricked walls. Their hateful gaze seemed to follow me as I walked into the house, as if I were a heretic walking into a holy congregation. The inside of the mansion was dark, oppressive, sparse and minimal in design, except for a lavish couch at an oak wood tea table. The dining hall was barely illuminated by a dying candle. The bare main table was massive and made of some exotic otherworldly wood. I noticed the muffled sound of chanting in a foreign tongue from below me. I walked around, trying to find some sort of entrance to a basement. I found a door and as I opened it, there was a quaking rumble that knocked me on the ground. Inside, as I descended the stone steps, the chanting grew louder and louder until they were screaming. If I hadn't covered my ears as the cacophony of those various voices reached a crescendo, I would have fallen prey to their song and become part of this world, a fate worse than hell itself. I approached the centre of the hall, past kneeling cowled figures and what appeared to be priests. Their chanting stopped abruptly, to be replaced by sounds of relief and rejoicing, of ecstasy and euphoria, moans of passion. Then came the glow. An unearthly and intoxicatingly beautiful bluish-black glow emanated from underneath my feet. The light of it filled me with every emotion I had ever experienced. My stomach churned and my face burned and stung, and I felt an invisible force choking my throat. And then the most joy, 
the most powerful sensation of euphoria I had ever felt. As this was happening, the floor around the altar slowly faded away, and I glimpsed what was rising from below. A blue poppy surrounded by hundreds of other flowers that emanated colors from blue to red to colors that couldn't be found anywhere in our world. The blue flower was beautiful, exquisite and exotic, even amongst the others. This poppy was very different from the rest. It held a menacing and addictive aura, one too strong for any normal person. But somehow I persevered and refused to submit to its addiction. I approached the plant with determination to remove it and destroy it once and for all, to help get me out of this place and to save the people of this world from further corruption. The people stared at me with wild and maddened expressions, like those of an addict when undergoing withdrawal. They spoke in a dazed, trance-like manner. I didn't understand their language, but I grasped their meaning. The flower is great. Submit and bow. I feel so good. I'm pretty sure something like that. Then I ran towards the altar. This roused them from their trance and into a frenzy. They let loose a unified guttural roar and surged forward, trying to stop me. I ran ahead and plucked the flower. And crushed it in my fist. I caught my breath and relaxed as I looked around to see the people. They were slowly dissolving and melting into the ground, which had also started to crumble. The building was... phasing out, and the outlines of my room were visible. I jumped out of the basement and into my room. When the other world was no longer visible, the book rose up in the air, opened, and a single page fell out, burning to ash on the floor. I did destroy that world. Not an ounce of that forest remains. I did it to save myself and others from that vile blue poppy. It was beautiful and did have a seductive fragrance, but if it was going to ensnare me in its thrall, it was best destroyed. My palm glowed with the same hue that the poppy had, and suddenly a ball of light with the same color hovered over my hand. As I looked within the orb, I saw the power that it contained, the ability to control plants and any vegetation around myself. I was entranced by it, and instinctively I held it against my chest. My body heated and cooled at the same time. I started to twitch on the floor, and then suddenly... Everything stopped. I stood up and looked at myself in the mirror. Nothing had changed. I looked towards the plant pot on my study table. I willed it to wither. And it did. I later willed it to become as healthy as it could. And it did. The power is real, and I'm not hallucinating, I said to myself. I destroyed a world and got the ability to control plants. Not that bad of a trade-off, right?